Disney held daily brainstorming sessions with Roy and Ub and a few other loyalists who had not signed with Mintz. Intent on dreaming up a bankable new character and one they would own, Disney's skeleton team scoured popular magazines for inspiration, bounced ideas off one another, and drew figures on their sketch pads until something began to emerge. Pear-shaped body, ball on top, a couple of thin legs, Iwerks later explained. You gave it long ears and it was a rabbit, short ears, it was a cat. With an elongated nose, it became a mouse. Walt suggested they name him Mortimer. Lillian thought that was terrible and came up with Mickey. As with Oswald, Ub took charge of the mouse's look. Walt gave him his personality. He doesn't have the financial backing to support what it is he's doing. He wants to be a bigger voice than he is. And it's a perfect metaphor, him being this small mouse, this seemingly insignificant figure or individual within this big industry that he wants to break into. Disney was unable to find a distributor willing to take a chance on his first two Mickey shorts. But Walt refused to give up on his mouse. At a meeting with Roy one day, as the tiny staff worked up a third and still unsold Mickey Mouse cartoon, Walt suddenly blurted out, we'll make them over with sound. How can I do something better with animation than what everybody else is doing? He's always the person looking for new technology. He's always the person trying to find the newest invention to make animation better. At the time, producing a soundtrack in sync with and music that makes sense with the action on screen is very difficult. This was a very precise and intricate process that Disney had to think through. And also it's unclear that the money it costs to make a sound film can possibly pay off with tickets sold. 